Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a digital step-by-step -step process video to show you how to use my new holiday card templates for 2018. Every year I like to design my own Christmas card and I create digital files to that end. And so I'd like to show you a little bit about how this brand new template set works. First things first, the template set is front and back. So you get two files in the package, but you actually get four files because one of them is an A2 sized card. So that is five and a half by four and a quarter. And that is a standard American A2 size. And the other card that comes in the package is five by seven. They are both the same design. And when you open up the template, you will see this is the front of the card and it comes with a title and it comes with a area for your photo and it comes with what I call a fade clip. And this just allows the photo to blend into the white. And then you have your sentiments here and they're all set up uh, separately so you can color them as you like, but you cannot type over this type because this was created with paid fonts. And so I turned them into artwork so that you could use them in whatever computer system you had and you did not need the fonts. There is also a backside to this template, and it looks like this. You have a font or free font area for journaling and some small title. Now in this uh, A2 size, it's very small type. I think this is, well, I'm gonna click on here and tell you, I think it's, yeah, it's eight point type. So that's pretty small. The five by seven has a larger font size, I believe by one point. But my thinking here is you just put something simple on the back. You can give what I plan to do, one sentence summaries of each person's year. Then the back also has four different layer masks to drop in photos. Uh, for me, it's gonna be one person in each family. You can use these in whatever way you desire. You can also combine layers together to create bigger photo spots if you don't have as many photos to share. But that's the basics. It's a very, very simple template. And now let's get into how you actually place your photos. Now I've gone ahead, I'm gonna click here on my photo bin. I've opened all the photos that I plan to use in this particular project. And the first thing I'm gonna do is drag in my family photo. I'm gonna click on it to bring it to the foreground. This has already been cropped. This has already been converted to black and white, mostly because there were so many colors going on that it was dizzying. And I thought we're just going black and white. Now this photo was taken in at the end, at the beginning of summer when my daughter graduated from college. Totally fine. I don't believe you have to stage a perfect family photo for a holiday card, because let me tell you, that's hard to do sometimes. So this snapshot, which was taken on someone's iPhone, fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna right click over here on the layer, and I'm just gonna go duplicate layer. And then very quickly, I'm going to copy it into the holiday card front, just like that. Click OK. And now I'm gonna to go to that card front and let's take a look at where it showed up. All right, it's up here at the very top. So I need to actually click on this and just drag it below the fade clip, just like that. Now I can clip it in, I can hold down my option or alt key till I get that little, that little symbol. It looks different in earlier versions of Photoshop. Click, it's in, it's not going anywhere, but that is the general look. It just fades into wishing you a Merry Christmas. Now, if you want to, you can start experimenting with different colors for the Very Merry. I know for a fact that I am going to be using a green because I'm going to be using green envelopes this year to mail out my cards. But this is where you can play and test some things out. And there are so many colors that you can choose from. Of course, there's the default colors. I don't quite understand how coloring works. Um, these palettes in Photoshop elements, it's not really my forte, but let's say, you're gonna click once on set foreground color because you want to have a true red for your very merry. Well, in the color picker, you can come in and you can grab that slider, push it all the way up to the, where the red is, come in till you find something that looks, I would err on the side of going a little lighter just because I think things pick up a little darkness when they print. Let's say that, okay? That little new looks good, so I'm gonna click okay. Now to change the color of this artwork, you just go to edit, fill layer, 
and when this little palette comes up, you're gonna choose foreground color. You could go background color. You could actually bring that color picker right back up. You could go black, you could go white, but I'm just gonna, I've already picked the color, so I'm gonna go foreground color. Always make sure preserve transparency is checked, otherwise your entire layer is gonna fill, and you don't want that. You just want the art on the layer. Where the pixels are, just like that, you've changed the color. So it's just kind of a trial and error thing. I'm gonna hit Command or Control Z to undo that because I like the green. What I would also recommend is if you have a photo printer at home, print, print one out, print a few out. See what the colors are looking like, especially if you're trying to match an envelope. But basically, for me, this is my holiday card. And now I will go File, Save As, and I'm gonna save this, well, I'll just put it on my desktop for now as a JPEG and I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna make sure that I save it as a quality 12, just the max quality, why not? Go for broke, it's not gonna add that much file size to the, the file itself. Click OK and I have now created a print ready file. So that's the first part of the card, the front. Now let's move on to the back side of the card. All right, I have my photo layers, and here's what I like to do. I'm going to click on what I call my target layer. This layer in the palette is called Photo One because I want to bring the next photo in. Now you can do this a number of ways. I'm going to use a picture of my husband. So I can click into the photo bin, drag up and release, and it's going to copy a picture of the hubs right in there. Okay, see that? The one reason I don't like doing it this way, if you come over here, you're gonna see a little smart object. The smart object is beyond the scope of this tutorial. It really, um, I don't like it, so I'm just gonna right click and simplify the layer just to get that little icon out. It just does this because your photo is in another location, so if you modified it in the other location, ideally it would link up to this location. My head just exploded. All I need is the photo of my hubby in his classroom. And I'm going to go ahead and clip it by just holding down my Option or Alt key and getting the little icon and clicking. And now I can kind of move him around a little because I want to see, I want a little bit of his classroom uh, to be shown because it's this is a big part of his story this year. All right, next photo is going to be me. Oh, and now here's another way. All right, let's go back to, there we go. I'm going to, collect or click on this so it's selected and again I'll just I'll just drag it and do the same thing but again that little icon can't stand it so I'm gonna right click simplify layer all right and now I'm gonna size my photo a bit before I place it now if you are in a full version of Photoshop you have to hold down your shift key while you do this otherwise your photos the proportion is gonna get really wonky but because Photoshop Elements doesn't require that, you just click on one of the corners and drag in. If you do not see the corners, you're going to need to make sure, I'm gonna hit the check mark first, come down here to the tool options, make sure that you have auto select layer and show bounding box, because then you will be able to see those handles. Again, I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key, I'm gonna hover my mouse between the two layers and click. And there's, there's me, I'm looking fabulous, all right. And this is going to reflect the story that I plan to tell about myself. Now, let's go down to the next photo, and that is going to be, if I go to my photo bin, my daughter. Oh, there she is. Now I just wanna show you another way too that you can actually bring a photo in. You can click, hold down your mouse, drag up to the back, drag down and release. It will also bring in a photo. And the whole clipping mask thing, if you don't like coming over here and doing these little, you know, hold down your alt or option, you can also go up to layer, create clipping mask. Now I used to teach online classes and I would always teach the keystroke, but Photoshop Elements, when they released, I think their latest version, they changed the keystroke. Drives me crazy. So now I no longer teach that keystroke because I'm most programs don't do that. They don't change key commands, but Photoshop Elements did. So you can always just go create clipping mask directly to the layer, see what your particular program is, and then you will know the keystroke. Now, I am going to grab one of the corners here. Now, because my daughter is featured on the front, that family photo was from her graduation. 
I thought it would be really fun because I am going to talk about how she is fresh off a national championship with her women's ultimate team from St. Olaf College, and I thought that would be really fun to have in the recap. The final story image is my son dragging him in. Again, we're going to get that weird icon. I'm going to right click, simplify the layer, and now I'm going to make him a little smaller. He probably doesn't love this photo, um, but I do. <laughs> And he's not here designing it. Am I right? Am I right, people? Okay. Check mark. I'm going to hover my mouse and click. And I think I'll make him a little smaller. You know, one of the things that I try to do when I'm doing a collage is have everybody be the same size. That's just not possible in this particular um, collection of images because my husband is, if I, I, I wanted the classroom to be part of the image. And again, I might make it a little bigger because it's funny to have legs cut off. But honestly... This is going to be recycled at some point. This is what I want to get across is that what I'm showing you is a really cost effective way to create a holiday card. And unless you keep your cards forever or people that you know, you know, chances are they're gonna end up in a recycling bin. So I think this is great. I think this is real life. This reflects our very brief synopsis that I'm about to share with you in the journaling. So. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. All right, my font here, this is a placeholder, okay? This is open sans. It is purely set up as a placeholder for you to type over. Now, I will be changing my font to Avenir. So with the type tool, you know, you select just like, it's just like a word processor. You click in. If you go Command key on a Mac or Control key on a PC and the letter A, the whole thing will select. It stands for select all. And then you can come down here and you can change your font. And I'm going to type in the font I am going to use, which is Avenir, not next. I just want Avenir. So I'm going to hit return and I'm going to try to come back and see why I don't have a regular Avenir. This is really beyond the scope. I do there we go. Avenir book. We'll do book. Check mark. And same thing up here. I'm going to come in here and you can leave it or you can go. I'm just going to type in Avenir Bold. I don't know why it's wanting to come up as the, uh, as that. This is, this is the magic of a tutorial. Let's go Avenir Bold. Let's go up. There we go. I don't normally work. Uh, let's go heavy. Avenir Heavy. I don't normally work in Photoshop Elements 18. I don't work in Photoshop Elements in general. I'm more of a straight up Photoshop Creative Cloud girl, but everything that I'm doing will also work in other versions of Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my journaling in here. And then once I have that in, this file is also ready to be sent to the printer as the back side. So once you have your journal in, journaling in place, again, you go file, yeah, file, save as. And again, you would save the back side also as a JPEG. Now one thing to keep in mind too, I'm going to be using a company called Overnight Prints for my particular project. You kind of want to make sure that you're not too close to the edge with any detail. Um, just so you don't lose anything. Because these aren't really set up with a traditional bleed, they're going to uh, come in a bit as they are printing and trimming these. So just don't want to have anything too close to the edge. And if you if you keep uh, mind, if you're mindful of that, can't speak now, digital, digital hard, um, you shouldn't have any problems. So that's a basic look at how to use these particular files. They're very simple. They're meant for a simple, really cost effective card. And I just wanted to show you really quickly where I print cards. I've been using this company now for, I don't know, four, five years. I've used them for invitations and Christmas cards and I think for the price, you get good quality. Well, great quality. Some Sometimes it's not perfect. Sometimes I've had a bent corner here or there, but by and large, the difference in paying uh, 200 or more dollars for Christmas cards versus creating a custom postcard type card, for me, it's just not worth it to go with a really expensive company. So um, what you're gonna do is you would go to the postcard section, go to start designing, and then once you get in, 
You just pick whatever size you're using here. I will be using a four and a quarter by five and a half, even though it's the dimension is actually flipped because that is the size that I'm using this year. You go to the upload your own design, boom, click on that. You do the front, you do the back, and actually let's, uh, well, let's go, let's upload one and see what happens. I'll just do the front here, desktop. Uh, I know I saved it somewhere. There we go, holiday card front, picking that up. So that's now uploaded and I'm actually gonna upload one more file. I went ahead and did the back side. Where did the back side go? Let's find it. That's the front. Where did I, newsletter side, there we go. I'm gonna hit choose and that will also upload. And I actually did the, uh, the type off camera to have, and I actually ended up cropping in my hubby a little bit more closely. Okay, so I'm gonna go to next. And then what you will see is I'm gonna actually, there's mailing services, don't, not gonna do it, but you can, you can, yeah, you can explore those. I just wanna get the images. And what it's gonna do is it's going to give me a, a proof here. So I can kind of see how this is gonna look and this is, this is what it's gonna look like. But what you need to see here is this little red trim. All right, that's, that's for the bleed. And that right here is not really reflective of the trim. So that's when I, when I actually, let's see if I can make this a little bigger. I'm gonna go plus, plus. Here it's gonna be fine, but on this one, you might be mindful to bring in you're journaling a little from the side for the bleed. The photos are gonna be fine, I don't care about that, but the journaling might wanna come in. And that's all you need to know. And then you can, you know, you can update your materials for printing, but I always just keep the 15 point premium, it's totally fine. I always add the satin, mass, satin matte finish. Um, you can round the corners on this as well if you like, I never do. And then you just go, Continue, okay, so here's the pricing. Here's what's crazy. No, I don't need a thousand. I'm gonna do no more than a hundred. I mean, I don't, I, well, 50, I think 50's fine. You may have a bigger list, but $23.15 versus if I were to do this somewhere, an online printing company that specializes in cards, it would be at least a hundred dollars, if not more. And so what I'll probably do is I'll do 100 and that way I have extras. I, my, my Christmas list is around 75. But the other reason that I'm doing this particular size, the four and a quarter by five and a half, because some people on my Christmas list are gonna get handmade cards as well because I make cards now and I've got a lot of really cute Christmas cards. So those will be going to some family members and close friends and I can then tuck in one of these four and a quarter by five and a half cards. So I just wanted to show you that and kind of explain a little bit of this process. But again, you wanna bring in your journaling just a little bit from the edge, just to accommodate for that bleed. This might be overkill, but I just thought, wanted to include the overnight prints details because I really do think it's a great value for the price. One of the cool things about this digital template is that I have a coordinating stamp set that is available through simonsaysstamp.com and it has matching sentiments and you can use this stamp set to decorate your envelopes or anything else that you might wanna tuck into your holiday greetings. So I will link below so you can have a link to the stamps, a link to the digital template. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments and I'm happy to answer. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. I'll see you back here again with another tutorial soon.